What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to my podcast, Battle Cage. Now, I'm having some technical difficulties with my uh, studio, so I decided to record using a mobile platform. And um, so I do apologize. I hope the sound is up to par. I have a portable mic that I plugged in. Uh, but in any case, um, let's go into the UFC Fight Night breakdowns. This is my early pick, my early lean. Let's recap what happened last week. This is my ticket. By the way, this is going to be a formal proof. Um, this is my ticket. I'm logged in. This is my account. Okay, as you can see, I'm placing bets. This is my account. This is a settled bet. Um, this was placed. November 18, right before my birthday, and this was a five-leg parlay, and we had Luana Pinheiro, Rafa Garcia, Adrian Yanis, Talia Santos, Sean Brady. It was a good parlay, five-leg parlay, plus 481, 250, to sling for 1450, 335. So, this was cashed out. Um... This was cashed out, so my new account balance is 588.87. I normally do not keep anything in my account once I hit it, um, like a big one, and I just you know take that out of here because I don't want to be tempted. Now you will see that my last hit uh, was not was you know was a college ball game. I took the over 80 and a half in that game for. Florida State versus Missouri. I was able to hit that. Um, and that's why you guys see the new balance. So that money was cashed out. It's already in my bank account. Um, and now I have a new account. Uh, I mean, new amount in my account to play with. I usually do not keep more than $250. $250, as you can see, is my standard slinger. <coughs> Pardon me. And... Um, as you can see, put a 250 for this parlay and a 250 straight. So I will be looking for another parlay to hit with a 250 and um, hope to hit it. And with that being said, I hope this is a validation that I do play. Uh, my platform is FanDuel. I, you, I also use DraftKings, but mostly here on FanDuel. So, yeah, I am about it. Please, no more questions. I don't want to hear that this guy's fake or whatever. This is validation. Once and for all, the, this never, you know, that I, I, I play. That's it. That's all we got to know. Anyway, let's go back to the task at hand. So, you guys know there's no fraudulent things going on. Um, if I say I'm playing it, I'm playing it. Win or lose. Um, I have tickets that won, tickets that lost, but I do play. So, anyway. <clears throat> so, with that being said. We're going to look at spots. If you're new to my channel, well, right now, make sure you go and like and subscribe right away. Don't waste a minute. Um, now that you saw that I'm, I'm, I'm about that life, I'm not just talking nonsense. Uh, whatever I talk, I actually place. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> go ahead and subscribe right now. The first spot we're going to look at is Cheyenne Base. Um who is now Cheyenne Vlismas. Um, not sure if they split up, you know, with her, if, she, if she left her husband or he left her, whatever that situation is. Um, hope for the best. Uh, in any case, I do like Cheyenne in this spot. I think she's a more aggressive fighter. Um, she comes forward. She does not, she's not timid. She definitely wants to fight. Um, so I like her in that spot. Mallory Martin, you know, nothing against her. Just not feeling it, to be honest. All right, the next spot that I'm looking at is this Russian dude. Um, he's undefeated. Uh, got like seven finishes. A uh, couple of submissions under his belt. Um, and he's a tough fighter. Take your God. Felipe Linz, a former heavyweight fighter who did, didn't do so well. Um, and now he's dropping down to the 205 light heavyweight division. He lost to Arnd uh, Andre Olovsky, uh last year. And then he lost to Tanner Bowser uh, via punches. 
a month later. I thought that was kind of stupid, if you ask me, to fight back to back. Um, but it is what it is. And if you want to know why that happened, well, if you look at the, if you look closely, uh, this happened May 13th. If you remember, this was last year, 2020. This was literally right when the epidemic was, the pandemic was everywhere. It was intense. And um, UFC was coming back and they needed fighters. And, um, you know, this guy was available. He fought in the PFL, did pretty well. PFL, PFL was not in commission during that time. And, um, yeah, they needed fighters, and he stepped in. Uh, a lot of fighters actually stepped in into the door with UFC. Uh, but as you can see, he had, you know, a pretty bad performance. And um, we haven't seen him for over a year now. I'm sure he's doing work. He's preparing. He has to be getting better. Uh, but uh, he has a tough t task at hand because he got an undefeated dude right here. And if it ends uh, in OV, an off, Russian dude, it's good enough for me, man. That's just how I see it. So I'll be taking a stab in this Russian guy in one of the parlays. Now, this is not a main parlay, but this is definitely a back stem um, to what's supposed to happen. Okay, so let's do that. Um, the next fight that I'm looking at is Leonardo Santos. I will be skipping... Maki Petolo and Dasta Tudorovic. Uh, for the sake of the video, I am picking Dasta Tudorovic. I think he's a better fighter. Um, he's a bigger guy. He definitely has the reach advantage over Maki Petolo. Petolo is a tough dude, uh, but he's on a losing skid, and this might be his last fight in the UFC. Alex Morono should be winning this fight. Uh, I do edge him to win. I'm just not confident enough to pull the trigger on him. Um, for that being with that being said, I'd rather take a stab on Leonardo Santos, who did get knocked out by Grant Dawson, but that was in the last two or three seconds of the fight. He was actually winning the fight until he got clipped, and um, prior to that, he was almost undefeated since like 2009. Uh, he is taking a very seasoned well experienced OG in the likes of Clay Guida, the carpenter who did pretty well himself in his last fight, even though he lost. Uh, but I am edging Leonardo Santos. And well, let's take Santos. Do, do, do. Right here. I will be skipping Jake Matthews versus Jeremiah Wells. No confidence in that fight, so skipping that. I do like Louis Smolka. Okay, I believe he's more experienced than Vince Morales. And he is coming in with an impressive... Um, did I say impressive? Delete that. He's coming in with a decent, decent enough... Of a um, ground game to secure the fight against Vince Morales. Vince Morales is a good boxer. We know that, but doesn't have doesn't have you know what it really really takes. Now he definitely won against the, uh, Dr Draco Rodriguez, and I I definitely had Vince Morales here. Uh, however, I don't think he has enough against Louis Smolka. I do like Louis Smolka, to be honest, at minus 142. But we might take that out. Now, the next one is Manel Cap versus Zuglas. Very good fight, very good matchup. There's a slight edge for Manel Cap, but at minus 200, I don't trust him enough. So, not going to be playing that. And the next one is Jamal. Hill versus Jimmy Crude. Now, I'm actually going to take this one out. Let's put...
Jamal, let's put Jimmy Crude. <clears throat> I do like Jimmy Crude in this bout. Now, he definitely sustained a loss to um, Anthony Smith. However, be mindful that it was the doctor stoppage because his leg was um, compromised. If given some time, he probably would have fought, but I understand it's not fair to allow a fighter to recover. So the, there was a sort of like a technical knockout, Dr. Stoppage. And, um, but he's a very, very good opponent for Jamal Hill. Very, very high level striker. Very, very high level, uh, grabbler. You know, decent submission. A pedigree game um, so has a win against Paul Craig who just beat um, Jamal Hill so the biggest weakness for Jamal Hill will, will be probably um, keeping the fight standing he is the bigger f fighter six foot four with a reach advantage so you you definitely can uh, count Jimmy crew to close the gap here and, um, yeah, I do like Jamal Hill. He's a very powerful fighter, but I will be edging uh, Jimmy Crute as an official play. Now, I'm skipping Claudio Polis, Chris, and Chris Gutzmager. We don't need that in our lives. Um, Brendan Allen versus Chris Curtis. This changes things up a bit because... In the original bout, it was Alan, it was Brandon Allen versus Roman Delitze, and I was very, very confident on Brandon Allen in the spot versus Roman Delitze. However, now that they're adding Chris Curtis, who just violated um, Phil Haas and violated like five of my parlays because I underestimated Chris Curtis, I'm just afraid with Chris Curtis. He will be coming in as a very, very juicy dog, um, plus 265. I do like hedging this, um, so I will be picking Brandon Allen. However, I will be hedging Chris Curtis in the same parlay, just, just taking him there. So I will definitely hedge Chris Curtis this time. Um, he definitely has my respect. Um, he knocked out Phil Hawes. In a stupendous fashion. Uh, he's riding a, an extremely good six win winning streak. This man is holding two belts over here. He was doing his thing in other promotion. Um, just violated Phil, Phil Hoss, like I said, who was a massive, massive, massive favorite in this fight. He was a minus 310. Okay. So I don't want to be a schmuck and underestimate Chris Curtis again, but. I definitely like Brandon Allen. Um, always did like Brandon Allen. I know he just had like this one loss uh, where he, against Sean Strickland where he just didn't look himself. He played a very, very stupid game. Since then, he was able to come back with a heel hook against Carl Robertson. And um, to tell you the truth, like the real, real truth, I... Oh, come on. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I should have went all out on Brandon Allen over here um like completely all out um yeah this was earlier this year there's that Anthony Smith and uh Jimmy Crute thing um just want to take a look he was minus 160 I definitely should have played very very heavy on Brandon Allen but I didn't and then he fought Punaheli Soriano, a very, very tough dude. I'm talking about a very tough guy in uh, Pun Punahale. You know, those bombs, very, very tough guy. And still, Brandon Allen was able to hedge that in. And again, I should have been so, so heavy on um, Brandon Allen uh, as I was before. Um Look at that, he's fighting Nick Maximoff. Okay, good. Um, yeah, again, definitely like Brendan Allen. And I should have went heavy again on him. So, 
That's why I'm going to take Brandon Allen again. I think he's a phenomenal fighter. Um, really high in him. And um, yeah, I'm going to back him. But I will hedge with Chris Curtis just because we saw what happens. So we already have our backbone of five. Um, we don't want to go more than that. We don't want to be greedy. Now, because we have Brandon Allen and we have some other fighters here. Um, as much as I like Alonzo Mainfield in this spot, I'm not confident enough to put him in a sure thing parlay. But I am confident enough to skip this fight and play Brad Riddell. Okay, I really, really like Brad Riddell in, the, in here. Um, the, the matchup is stupendous. Age very close. Uh, body composition very close. Record identical. Um, yeah, I just think the competition-wise, Brad Riddell has a better competition. And in terms of fighting, I think his style is perfect for Faziev. And... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, guys. It's perfect for FaZF in here. We're going to see a phenomenal fight. We're going to see some world-class martial arts here. Uh, but I'm edging Brad Riddell just a bit. And it's just enough for me to take Brad Riddell. Um, another fighter that I always back. So we're going to take him. And finally, I do want to take Jose Aldo, a plus 134. I don't know if I have what it takes. I'll probably take it. I'll probably take this in a 17 parlay. And this is looking like $78, which would be a dream come true. Um, but to be realistic, I'll probably not play Jose Aldo. And I'll probably take out Cheyenne Buys, although I really like her. Um, but everything else looks legitimate. Uh, everything else looks really good. And this is a 250 slinger. Um, also pays very, very well. In the beginning of my video, you saw that I usually do it. Um, and I'm very good with these picks. Um, I, I'm not in Jersey, so I can't lock it in. I would have done it right in front of you guys. That's how much I'm very confident with these picks. I uh, feel very good at it. A uh, detailed breakdown will be happening based on my picks. So, all of these picks will be broken down. So, out of this entire fight card, I will be breaking down seven in detail. And the rest will be like overview. Uh, there, are, there are a lot of great spots in this card. <coughs> Pardon. There's a lot of fights happening. Uh, but if you guys new to my channel, this is how it's going to be. It's going to be an early lean. Pick the spots. Um, pick the spots and go with it. And, um, and after that, we break them down and, and finalize. Uh, so I'm hoping to finalize this today, actually, because I don't want the lines to start changing. Uh, because after this weekend, it's, they're going to start changing uh, pretty fast for the most part. Um, so let's just quickly take a look at this. You know I got to look at this fight. Jose Aldo, the OG, taking on up-and-coming fighter. Uh, Rob Font, who's not like a beginner beginner. He's 34. But he's trying to make noise. Trying to go for that title. I will say Jose Aldo looked great ever since he went down to 135. Uh, we all are familiar with his style, come close, technical boxing, incoming, bombs, heavy body blows, um, and looking to kill. I mean, Jose Aldo is a monster, uh, but Rob Font is also very, very tough. He does his thing. He doesn't back down, and this is going to be a great, great fight. This has a potential of being... A if this is going to be a, a crazy knockout, possibly Jose Aldo getting knocked out. But if you want to think of a more technical fight, um, could be Jose Aldo going the distance in a massive war. Uh, but yeah, it's a great, great fight overall. I do want to break it down a little bit, a little bit more. 
analytically for you guys. So stay tuned. That's going to be happening by next week. Hoping Monday will be the technical breakdown. Uh, so again, we have seven fights to break down. And this is how I do things. So there are 14 cards as of 14 fights scheduled in this uh, card. We're looked, we looked early. We found some fish. And we're going to hope that we catch them all. And um, yeah, that's how I do things. So I look at it. I don't waste my time. I see what I like. And once I do, I look at the lines. I look at the spots. Um, and then, you know, I play a parlay. And I also do straight picks as well. Uh, but these are my official plays. And um, as you can see, they will be in my parlay. And, and some of them will be a little bit more straight on. I'm thinking Jimmy Crude will be a straight on play. Uh, possibly maybe a... Um, a parlay, a small parlay, and I do think Brad Riddell will be a straight play as well. Um, so, thank you all for checking in on this very short and sweet video. These are my early lean, lean picks uh, for the upcoming December 4th fight, UFC Fight Night, Rob Fon versus Aldo. Thank you all. Happy holidays. Happy Thanksgiving. Hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. And um, let's get this money. I'm outie.